Hello and welcome to this video on molecular shape. So before we start to talk about shape, what we want to do is we want to go back and review a little bit about Lewis structures. So for example, let's take a pretty basic one like um, CH4, okay, methane. And with CH4, we know that each carbon has four valence electrons and so we can do the dot diagrams for each one of these particular elements and we know that each hydrogen only has one valence electron. Carbon wants to have eight, hydrogen only needs to have two. And so we can go ahead and we can show that bond happening between carbon in each one of these hydrogens. Now another method that we can use when we go to do this is we can actually count up the total number of valence electrons that each one of these would have. And so let me give you another example. So say we had something like NH3. Um, and so each N, N has five valence electrons, and H has one valence electron, but we actually have to multiply that by the three hydrogens that we have, and so we would have a total of three valence electrons, okay? And so we know when we add these up, we should have a total, okay, so total of eight valence electrons, okay? And so what we can do is we can place that central atom in the middle, which is nitrogen because it's the one that we only have one of, and then we can show a bond to each one of those hydrogens. So we'll go ahead and bond to each one of the hydrogens, one, two, three, and then what we do is we go ahead and apply. If we need any additional valence electrons, they would go on the outer elements first. Since all three of those hydrogens only need two valence electrons and they are perfectly fine, we can go ahead and just place that last pair, that lone pair of electrons on the central atom. Okay. Um, I can give you one other example here. So say that we had um, carbon tetrafluoride, we could do the same thing and we could count them all up. And after you bond to each one of the fluorines, you would want to make sure that you did those valence electrons on the outside of the fluorines. Okay. And we just kind of start to get used to doing these. So I guess I should have bonded it to each one of them first and then draw my dots, but it works either way. So we have a certain, um, once we have those, those structures, those Lewis structures done, then what we can do is we can start to determine a little more information. And so we have this thing called VSEPR theory. And it stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. And the idea behind this is that electron groups, okay, so electron groups are going to repel each other because they are all negatively charged due to Coulomb's forces and electron repulsion. And the, the idea is that these electron groups can include lone pairs, it can include a single bond or multiple bonds. And so each group, lone pair, single bond, or a double bond or a triple bond, is going to be its own group, okay? And electron groups are going to maximize, okay, maximize the separation. to minimize the repulsion. And that is where these shapes are going to start to form. And so these valence electrons that we have are going to repel each other and, and result in a specific geometric shape for our molecules. And as we start to build larger molecules, then that ends up adding to the function, the overall function of our molecules. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this chart that kind of gives us a little bit more information. So those electron groups would also be considered to be the electron regions, okay? So those groups are those regions. And so we're going to talk about these regions. So how many of those regions are bonded versus how many of them do we have total? And so in the first one, if we just have two things that are bonded together, okay, we have two atoms that are bonded together, and they just have one region, okay, so this would be our bond region, 
and that one region is bonded, then it's got to be linear. There's nothing else we can have here. Now, if we had two regions, so say we have a central atom, and it's going to be bonded to two things, okay, and we have two of those are bonds, then it's also still going to be linear. Now, what happens when we end up with three bonding regions? So we're going to have our central atom, and we're going to have three regions, and all three are bonded. What we get is something called trigonal planar. And so what that means is that it's a triangular shape, but it's all just in one plane. So it would be flat, but it would be kind of a triangular shape. Now, if we were to have something that was bent, bent is going to be something where we have three regions. Okay, so we have three regions here. One, but only two of them are bonded. And so here's where lone pairs of electrons on the central atom, so maybe I'll make the lone electrons, I'll make the lone electrons blue. The lone electrons are impacting that shape because they're pushing against those other electrons that are bonded. And that's where we get a bent shape, okay? So it wouldn't be linear because those lone pairs. Now in the linear ones, we didn't have lone electrons on the central atom. For a tetrahedral, we have four regions, all four of them are bonded. So this is similar to our methane. Okay, so central atom in the middle, four regions around, and this is always dealing with around the central atom. So when I'm talking about these regions, it's regions around the central atom. Okay, maybe I should put that up here. Regions around central atom. With electrons. All right, so now the last two, we have trigonal pyramidal, so again, a triangular shape, and with this one, we have four regions, but only three of them are bonded. So we're going to have three bonds, and again, this one's going to have a lone pair of electrons. And so it forms more of a pyramid shape because those lone pairs of electrons are impacting the overall shape. Okay. And last but not least, we have the shape that is bent. So there's two bent possibilities. And this one is one where we have a central atom, two bonds, but now we're going to have two lone pairs because there's a total of four regions. And so we would have two lone pairs on our central atom. Okay. So those are all the possibilities. Actually, there's more than that, but this, these are the ones that we work with this year. So let's do some examples of these. Say we just had something like H2. Well, the only possibility between those two H's being bonded is that each one of these um, there's only one region, and that one region is bonded, so it has to be linear. Okay. Let's try something like CO2. So we know with CO2 we have one C double bonded to an O, double bonded to another O. Now there are lone pairs of electrons, but those lone pairs of electrons are not on carbon. Carbon is the central atom. And so what we have is we have two regions. We have one region here. The double bond counts as one region. Okay, so I'm going to put that over on the side here. Double bond is only one region. So we have a double bond on the right side of carbon and on the left side of carbon. There's two regions total. Both of them are bonded. That makes this also linear. Okay. Um, the next one, if we had like boron tetrafluoride, BF3, we would have boron. Boron is single bonded to three Fluorines. Remember, boron is that exception. It only needs a total of six valence electrons, so it's good. Each of those fluorines then would need to have 
valence electrons. Now, again, the valence electrons on fluorines do not impact the shape. It's only if we were to have valence electrons on the central atom of boron. So now, around boron, we have one, two, three regions, and all three of them are bonded. And so that means that this is going to be trigonal planar. Let's try a couple more. Um, let's do CH4. Okay, for CH4, we're going to have a carbon single bonded to four hydrogens. Okay, so again, the central atom is carbon. We have one, two, three, four regions. All regions are bonded, and so this is what we would consider a tetrahedral. Okay, tetra meaning four. All right, we're going to do a couple more. So let's go back to that NH3. So now we have N is bonded to three hydrogens, and nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons on it. Okay, here's where it starts to get different because we have one, two, three bonds, but we have four regions. So we have one region that's unbonded. Okay, And so we have four regions and only three of them are bonded, then that means we have a trigonal pyramid. Oops. Trigonal. Let's do one more example, H2O, pretty classic. Okay, And a lot of times we see the H2O molecule kind of as this bent shape, and the reason we do is because we end up with oxygen bonded to two hydrogens and then two lone pairs. So whether it has one lone pair or two lone pairs, if there are two bonded regions in either one or two lone pairs on that central atom, so we have one, two, three, four regions, but whenever we see two bonds and any one or two pairs, um, lone pairs on the central atom, we know that it's going to be a bent shape. And so water is a bent shape. I hope that was helpful for you, and we will take a look at more of those in class.